Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new edition of Startup Showcase by Activize. Startup Showcase is a daily episode in which we interview shortly a startup that we encounter in our programs or in our scouting. And today we have as guest uh, Sebastian from Tutu Trust Ventures. Hey, Sebastian, welcome to the club. Hello, Mircea. Thank you for having me. Uh, we usually start with a short question about uh, saying in one phrase, one minute, what's the startup about? So share with us, please. Sure. Tutu Trust Venture uh, is a B2B startup uh, and we act in the, in the FinTech ecosystem. Basically, our solution aims at transforming how retail lending is done by introducing dynamic pricing. Though you, of course, know that dynamic pricing is everywhere in all its sorts of industry, but it's not yet in banking. So that's what we intend to do. Yeah, and although, Sebastian, you're from France, you're actually living in Romania and the startup is uh, Romanian-based, right? Absolutely. So I'm the only foreigner in the team. Everybody is Romanian. Uh, but it's true. I'm, I've been living in Romania for 10 years and love the country. How did you come up with the idea? Because it's quite niche, uh, I think. Yeah, so I've been working uh, in the banking industry for the last nine years. And I, I could see that this is a very conservative industry and that needed or I wanted and that needed to be uh, shaken up. So th th that's what we do. So basically, you're offering this to banks or other financial institutions, which need what exactly? Yeah, we do that. So, so the client, the, the, the client of Tutu Trust Venture is a bank today and uh, we help them into innovating in this product that is the lending, the, the normal credit for you and me that hasn't been changed for hundreds of the year because basically the mechanics of credits haven't been changed for hundreds of years and and by in the, introducing this dynamic pricing into the mix we fundamentally change to the benefit of the end client of the bank this product and this is where lies the innovation in fact so if i understand correctly the banks would improve their crediting process uh, and uh, scoring and thus the final users like you and me who are want to get credit from the bank they can actually have better conditions and a better uh, evaluation absolutely so as you know today if you would go to a bank any bank on the market what's happening is that you uh, you constitute your credit file and from the credit file, the bank is telling yes or no. And then they give you a price, which is the interest rate that you are going to repay until the end of your credit. And the story stops there. And what we are doing is that we don't really change this phase. But what we start talking about is what's happened from the moment they give you the money until the end of the credit. So it can be from one year to five years to 30 years on a mortgage credit. And what we intend to do is to price correctly on a monthly basis the client according to his evolving situation. So mm -hmm. he can change his financial behaviors or we have a lot of incentive to modify client behavior to the client's advantage. So the idea is to reduce the price of everyday people on their credit. So then even after you take the credit uh, along the way, if you have a good behavior, then you can have uh, some extra benefits on the way. Absolutely. So it can be something as easy as saving money. So would you save money, you as a client, on top of reimbursing your credit? That means for the bank that actually you present less risk. So if you present less risk, why would you keep the same price as you had when you did not? have the opportunity to save money. Mm -hmm. So this is and where there we is as well a positive behavior in the Absolutely. Well. Yeah, that's uh, that's totally a win-win both for the bank uh, and for the clients. Uh, could you share with us uh, what's the status of the product and the business? Where are you along the growth path? Yeah, so basically we are, uh, from a technological point of view, we are at the MVP. So we, we have a product, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a really minimal product. And we have started meeting uh, with our partners, for, so Activize and KPMG. We have started meeting banks. Uh, so we were really lucky to meet uh, the, the executive seats, like CEOs of, uh, of Romanian banks. And their feedback has been very positive. But we are still looking for a partner to enter the market because, as you know, this is a very regulated market. So we cannot extend credit by ourselves and we need a banking partner to do that. How is uh, KPMG helping you in the partnership that you mentioned earlier? So KPMG is uh, advising us on the, regular, the, the regulatory dimension. 
uh, helping us with, with the relations with Benere, as well as introducing us to bank executives. And I mean, that that's really great to have them next to us because they also bring this extra credibility that often, you know, a very small startup such as ours do lack. What are the plans for the next 12 months for you for to do trust ventures? So the target uh, already by the end of the year would be to sign four banks on the Romanian market and to start market tests. So what we call market test is really a small set of product that we would price, let's say uh, 50 credits per bank. So you see it's very small for them, but it allows us to see how clients will react to this product uh, because we had some feedback that Oh, you know, banking clients are not uh, sufficiently educated to understand this notion of dynamic pricing. And we are totally of the opposite opinion. This is why we want to make it very clear through market testing. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, we need somebody, a banking partner to enter that. So, so the, the first step for us would be to sign up to four banks into those market testing and then be ready early 2021 to enter into an actual commercial relation. What would be the toughest uh, challenges you encountered so far in the process of building this venture? So <laughs> the toughest uh, so far actually is, uh, is to have this flexibility to adapt to potential partners' condition to make sure that you can actually do a business. So um, you see, as I told you, this is a regulated, a regulated market. So we really thought initially that we would have the understanding of the regulator and that we could actually grant a small number of credit by ourselves just for the market testing. But we quickly understood that that would not be the case and, and this is understandable and that we would need to go to banking partners. And then when you face the banking partners, you need to understand that those guys, they don't really like IT at all. And, and this is kind of scary for them. So you need to adapt to that. And each time it, it's a small pivot. So I think what I learned and the, the, the biggest challenge is to keep both your values and your ideas while having the agility to adapt. <laughs> and beyond the challenges, I mean, if you surmount all of these in the next years, how would you see in an ideal case, uh, the startup growing a couple of years from now on? So you want to achieve? The, the fundamental problem that we see today uh, and that, uh, at the end of the day we address is that um, despite the common understanding that uh, banks and bankers are really rich, if you really look at the R numbers, you will see that the profitability of banks are, are actually under the expectation of their own investors. Um, and this is where we want to make a difference and to contribute. So it's a larger problem. And by repricing correctly, so I told you banks that have this really static pricing methodology, uh, by repricing dynamically, we want both to help and clients to obtain much cheaper financing uh, while increasing the profitability of banks. So. I think our natural extension, if everything goes well, would to overgrow Romania and, and to go uh, at the, on the different European markets. Because if you look at the, the mechanics of credits all over Europe, thanks to uh, the, the common regulation, this is pretty similar. So, so we could extend. Uh, How do you see the, the evolution of the ecosystem uh, or, or the openness of the banks or of the people, the final users in the count, context of prices? How, how is the behavior and the attitude changing? I, I think on the end client, uh, end client dimension, so people like you and me that do have a credit, people are, are really getting used to this notion of repricing. So we all use Uber or in France, if you take a, a train ticket or if you buy a flight ticket in Romania, you know that depending on when you buy it and, and the demands, uh, so the price is going to change. So the end user is very used to this notion of dynamic pricing. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the one that will need to change the most are the banks actually. Uh, because as I said, they have been pricing their credit almost in the same way for, for hundreds of years. <laughs> So they, this is a big change for them. They will have to, to adapt. For so the end users, is like a gamified uh, process in which if you do specific things and you have a good credit behavior or paying back behavior, then you can actually have uh, discounts later on. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So, so that makes sense for them. I think the the banks are are getting convinced. It, it's a bit still uh, sci-fi for them, but they they see that uh, this is coming and uh, and they kind of start to adopt it. I actually think that you're in uh, in a good position because the fintech trend was growing quite a lot uh, lately, also in Eastern Europe, uh, and as well uh, the new fintech uh, startups who are coming up and growing and creating some kind of pressure. So the banks who are older are trying to move fast and adopt technology. So and it, from this perspective, I think you're in a good spot. And it might be that the credits will grow. The credits trend will be growing because of the crisis. So this might mean that uh, they are more open to, to test new things and to optimize the pricing. Yes, I totally agree with you. And if you... If you think of uh, people like Revolut or, or big fintech startups, what is very interesting is that almost everybody entered into the, the payment era first because it's, it's pretty natural. This is where you have the least barrier to entry, whereas crediting, which is the core of what it means doing banking, is very regulated. The, the, the point here is that we wanted to enter the, this, in this core of, of banking because we truly believe that all those startups, they will need to rebundle everything and to enter credits if they want to be one day profitable. I actually think that would be a good topic for our own webinar with a couple of more uh, people from the fintech ecosystem to discuss about all this. An idea to keep in mind for the following weeks. Tell us as a last question, how could the audience help you? Do you need something that people who are watching this video could uh, help you out later on? Definitely, I, I think uh, skilled developers is in a high demand. And so anybody interested by, by fintech and, and dynamic startup, ambitious startup, uh, they would be more than welcome. We have all this uh, very interesting development on pricing of the information through AI. So um, anybody that is um, ambitious and skilled is welcome at Tutu Trust Venture. And as well, if, you're, uh, if someone is working in the banking industry and has connection in the industry, I think that would be helpful as well. Right. Of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the more people we meet, the, the best it is. So uh, how can people reach you out? So we got this website, tututusventure.com, uh, and you will find all our contact information through that. And you can, of course, reach us on LinkedIn as well. So don't hesitate. Okay, thanks a lot. Good to have you here. Uh, everyone who's watching this, see you tomorrow for another episode. And Sebastian, good luck and keep in touch on this topic as well. Uh, Thank you, Mircha, for having me. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.